I'm going to start off talking about log equations. So here we go. Remember, a log, when I say log equation, you know, it's an equation where you have whatever you're solving for, like in this case the x, it's in, it's in a log. So it's the log of x equals something. In this case, we have uh, log base 2 of 3 plus log base 2 of x equals 4. And, of course, we want to solve for x. So, remember, we kind of broke it down into three steps. We got combine. And when I say combine, remember, that just means use the properties to take all these log uh, terms and make them into one. So you can see I've done that here. I've taken this log base 2 of 3 plus log base 2 of x equals 4, and I combined it into uh, just the log base 2 of 3x. Now, after you do your combining, you convert. And you can see here I've done that because I've, I've taken that log equation, log base 2 of 3x equals 4, and I just simply applied an exponential base of 2 to both sides. Now, when I did that, of course, the left-hand side, the log base 2, when I applied an exponent base 2, the log base 2 and, you know, the base, the exponential base 2, they sort of canceled each other out because they're inverses. So all you get on the left-hand side is 3x, and all you get on the, and what you get on the right-hand side is 2 to the fourth. So that's the conversion part. Now, after you convert, you just want to solve. And in this case, solving it you know, we just have a regular old 3x equals 2 to the fourth, and that's an easy one to solve. All you do is divide by 3. Okay? So remember, in general, whenever you have an equation, a log equation, a logarithmic equation, the way you want to solve it is you, you think combine, convert, and solve. Those are the three steps that you go through. Okay? Now, let's look at an example here. And, of course, um, let's see. Let me see if I can change pin color. Okay. Now, so, uh, for example, this one. We want to combine, convert, and solve. So, you notice here what we have is we have the, the conversion or the combining part first. We have log base 2 of x times x minus 1. Okay. So we used our properties of logs, combined log base 2x with log base 2x minus 1. Now the next thing we do is convert. So that's going to give us x times x minus 1 equals 2 to the fourth. Now, the next step is to go ahead and solve this. So we combined, we convert it, now we have to solve. And of course, this is a quadratic equation. So to solve this quadratic equation, I need to get everything on one side, clear my parentheses, and combine like terms, and then solve it. Yes, Chad? I don't understand that convert step. I don't get what you do. Well, so to convert, Remember, what you're actually doing is you've got uh, a log base 2 on this side. And the conversion, really what we're doing is we're applying a base 2 to both sides. So, for example, when we have log base 2 of x equals 3, let's say, what we're really doing is just applying a base 2 to both sides. Now, the thing about applying that base 2 to both sides on the left-hand side, we've got 2 raised to the log base 2. Well, because the log base 2 and 2 to the x are inverses, you think of these as kind of undoing each other. So you just get an x. And then over here, you have the 2 to the third. So that's what we talk about when we talk about conversion. Now, we weren't thinking of it that way, though. On this one, when we talk... When, I mean, we didn't go through all that thought process of saying, well, I'm applying a base 2. 
What we, what we did was we, we kind of thought about it this way. Here's a log base 2. I'm going to take that base out, bring it across the equal sign, and we think of it as changing to an exponent base. And then all you're left with is just this, this stuff right there. I got you. Okay? Okay, good. Now, well, we've got this equation to solve. Now, of course, a quadratic equation generally is going to require us to have everything on one side and zero on the other. And then we go back and we say, well, how, how do we solve that? Sometimes we can solve quadratic equations by factoring. This one, I don't think we can factor this. However, we're fortunate because we know that we can use the quadratic formula. And remember the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's right, divide it by 2a. Now, you must have that formula memorized. This is a very important formula. So if you don't have that formula memorized, go back and, and uh, put it in your knowledge pot. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and look at this now. So here's what we've got. In our particular case, we've got that A is equal to 1, B is equal to negative 1, and of course C is equal to negative 16. Now, plugging into this formula, let's see what we have here. We have negative b. So a negative negative 1, that's going to be 1 plus or minus b squared, which is 1 minus 4ac. All over 2 times 1. Okay, any questions about that? Now, what that gives us is this. We have 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus, what is 4 times 16? Um, 64. And, of course, this is going to be 1 plus or minus the square root of 65 all over 2. Now, so that's what the, that's the solution to this equation right here. x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 65 all over 2. However, that doesn't mean that that's the solution for the original log equation because, remember, for logs, we can't have a situation where we're plugging in a zero and taking the log of zero. The log of zero is undefined. Neither can we take the log of a negative number and get out a real output, a real number output. So what we have to do is we have to look at our solution and make sure that when we plug it back into the equation, we're not going to get a negative, a negative value that we're trying to take the log of, or zero. So. If you look at this, now look, this is the square root of 65. That's approximately 8, right? 8 squared is 64. So six, square root of 65 is just a little bit bigger than 8. So if we look at this, if we look at 1 plus the square root of 65, is there anything that's going to keep that from working up here? No, that works. See, log base 2 of this value right here is fine, of course. And this value, 1 plus the square root of 65 over 2, is certainly bigger than 1. So when we plug it in this second term, it will work, right? We're not going to get a negative. However, uh, 1 minus the square root of 65 over 2 will definitely not work, right? Because this is a negative number. This is like 1 minus 8 over 2, approximately. And that won't work in the first term. It won't work in the second either. So this right here is not a solution. So our only solution is 1 plus the square root of 65 over 2. Okay? Any questions about that? No, is there a base in your background? Yep, there is. Okay. <laughs> 